You are probably practicing your major and your minor skills along with intervals, thirds, and arpeggios and whatnot. But if you're serious about your saxophone playing, don't forget about the chromatic scale because it's a scale that will often pop up in music whether you play jazz, classical, or anything else. And it will give you a deeper knowledge of your instrument because you will be forced to know all the notes and to know all the positions. So today, let's look at the chromatic scale. <laughs> Hey guys, Martino here. I am the founder of the London Saxophone School. We do saxophone lessons in London, UK and online. If you are struggling with your saxophone playing and you need some help, feel free to email me at martino at londonsaxophoneschool.com for more information about lessons. Or you can even book a free discovery call with me where we can have a chat. I can learn about your background and we can make a plan and see how you can achieve your saxophone goals. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell. So before we start, I want you to have the general overview of this lesson. So I'm going to break down this video into three parts. We're going to start with the definition of a chromatic scale. We're going to go into the ranges in which you should be playing the chromatic scale on. And then I'm going to show you the, the notes and the positions of the chromatic scale. So all the notes from top, from top to bottom. Now, the cool thing about the chromatic scale is whether you play jazz classical or any other style, you will see the chromatic scale appearing at some point okay so let's take for example blue monk a, a really common jazz standard there he utilizes pieces of the chromatic scale to form a really cool melody <laughs> cool example is take five the b section of take five where there's a lot of chromaticism happening to make a really cool melody again in here check it out and so on now if we change style completely and we go to the classical saxophone if we go to the glasnost concerto halfway through the second page there's a massive part only using chromatic scale <laughs> So the first part of the video is defining what a chromatic scale is and for this we don't really need the saxophone not really we need a keyboard because the keyboard will help us visualize the actual scale while this thing doesn't if we take the keyboard and we take the interval c to c the octave okay the chromatic scale is playing every single white key and every single black key in that octave so white black white black white white black white black white black and white if you notice every single note has a distance of a semitone or a half step between each other so semitone 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 and semitone and then repeat so the cool thing about the chromatic scale is it has the same structure all throughout so once you learn how to play it you'll be able to start it on any on any note on any given note because it will just be exactly the same thing okay so uh enough with that now let's go back to the saxophone and let's and let's play it so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna take the full range chromatic scale which goes from low b flat all the way up to top f sharp and then back down okay that's what we're gonna work on but if you're more of a beginner intermediate player we're gonna shorten that full range chromatic scale and we're gonna reduce the amount of notes that you have to play so you're basically gonna be playing the orange boxes see those orange boxes over here okay those are still within the full range but what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, get rid of some notes at the beginning some notes in the middle and some notes at the end okay so once you have control of that orange box in here which is the intermediate level it'll be easier for you to transition to the full range chromatic scale so let's start looking at the full chromatic scale let's start on a low b flat the way you play low b flat is by playing your low c one two three four five six and seven and then adding the pinky on the left hand down Okay, so you can see it here. Now the pinky needs to be stretched, especially if you haven't played uh, B flat so much. At the beginning, you might feel weird because you have to stretch it, but then over time, that will actually stretch and you will be, uh, you will be comfortable. So that's low B flat. <laughs> 
after this we go to B, which is basically your low C plus you, you put your pinky on the inside key. Then we go to C. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then we go to C sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus the outside key with the pinky. Now remember, there's a link in the description here where you can download the uh, fingering chart plus all the sheets that I've put so far in the video so you can have it with you at all times for reference in case you forget anything. Now after C sharp, we go to D. Intermediate players, this is for you. This is where you would start. D is one, two, three, four, five, six. Then go to D sharp, same as D plus the pinky on, on top on this key here. Then lift these two fingers, pinky and, and fourth finger, and go to E, which is one, two, three, four, five. Lift one finger, F. Change to middle finger, F sharp. Lift that finger, G. Use the pinky from the left hand on the top key over here. That's G sharp. Lift the pinky and the fourth, go to A. Now let's go to A sharp. Keep that A in place and then with the right hand, press the last key out of the, I call it the trio here, that's A sharp. And then go to B, first finger only. Switch to the middle finger for a C. Then go to C sharp, nothing. Don't press anything at all. Then let's go to the high octave. So everything that we're gonna play from here onwards is gonna require the octave key over here. So we're gonna go to high D. So a D, one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the octave key. Same position, so it's a low octave, exactly the same. Pretty simple. Then D sharp, we're gonna press, we're gonna add the pinky on top over here. Lift the pinky and the fourth, so go to E, one, two, three, four, five. Lift one finger, go to F. Change to the middle finger, F sharp. Lift that finger, go to G, one, two, three. Add the pinky of the left hand to the key, um, to the first key over here. That's G sharp. Lift the pinky and the fourth, go to A. Same as before, A sharp, keep the A down here. With the other hand, uh, press the first key from the bottom up. That's A sharp. Then go to B, first finger only. Switch to middle for C, to middle finger, I mean, to C. And that's intermediate players, that's for you. That's the end, um, that's the top note for you guys, okay? Now, advanced players, keep going with me. C sharp, keep the, keep the thumb pressed, and we're gonna go to C sharp, so no keys whatsoever. First palm key for D, so that's gonna be the first palm here, okay? can see it here I hope then keep that pressed keep the D pressed and then add one um, more more palm key which is here D plus that one there that's D sharp now for E keep these two pressed and add the first one here from the top out of the trio that's top E 
uh, for F, keep the E down, okay, and add the last palm key, which is over here, okay, that's an F. Last one, very top, keep the F down, and then with the right hand, you, I use the four, the fourth finger to press to 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 press the F sharp. F sharp is this long key over here, and we've reached the top of the chromatic scale. Now let's come down. Now remember, when we come down, we use flat. So anything that that was sharp before now becomes flat. Stop F sharp. We just seen it. Okay, F sharp. So lift one finger, lift the F sharp, and go to F. Now lift one finger, left to F, so it's that one there, that palm key, so lift that to E. Now from E, get rid of that key here for E flat. Now get rid of that key here for D. Now let's go to D flat, same as C sharp, so Nothing apart from the thumb over here. Now, intermediate players, you're back. Top C. Switch to B. Now, B flat, same as A sharp. Now, in this case, because we're coming down, we're not going to do this finger in here as we did on A sharp, but we're going to do this finger in here. Okay, so from B, you're going to slide onto this the the little the little key over here for B flat A up one finger now A flat is the same as G sharp so what we need to do is we need to go to that okay so from A we're gonna go to A flat so it's putting two fingers down Nate G, one, two, three. Now G flat, keep the G down and add the middle finger. G flat, same as F sharp. Now change to four, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's an F. Then add one more finger, E. E flat, same as D sharp, add two more fingers. So add the six, which is a D, and the pinky on top over here, uh, B, uh, that's E flat. Now lift the pinky for a D. Now let's go to D flat, which is the same as C sharp. So no fingers whatsoever, nothing. Now let's go to C, middle finger only. Switch to first finger, that's a B. Same thing as before, to go to B flat, we're not gonna use the other A sharp um, finger that we used to go up, but we're gonna use the, we're gonna slide over to the little one. Now the reason why we, sl we slide down, coming down, is because it's gonna be easier to go faster when you slow down and when you use the little one. Right, if you use the side one, it's just gonna be harder. But when you go up, it's gonna be easier to use the side one. Little parenthesis in there, okay, from B flat. Now, A, one and two. A flat, same as G sharp, um, same as before. So add two more fingers here. G, one, two, and three. G flat. Add the middle finger. Now go to F. One, two, three, four. One more finger, E. To go to E flat, same as D sharp, add two more fingers. D finger and the pinky over here on top. And intermediate players, this is the last note for you. Advanced players.
players keep going so from d go to d flat so d add two fingers the pinky down here for c and the outside key over here on with the other pinky <laughs> For C, get rid of this pinky here. So lift that pinky here and leave this this pinky over here. Now low B, keep the C down and add the pinky over here on the inside key. And last note, keep the C down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, keep all down, that down, and the pinky goes to the big key here so stretch that pinky out and there you have it that's the complete full range chromatic scale yay we made it <laughs> so guys there you have it the chromatic scale remember the chromatic scale is a very important scale that you want to know and you want to have it under your fingers because it will pop up in every piece you play well, I mean, not every piece, but it just, it's just going to be really useful. Okay, so practice your majors, practice your minors, and also dedicate time to your um, chromatic scale. Also remember that the bottom of the instrument and the top of the instrument are usually pretty hard, annoying. This, it just takes more time for those two extremes to develop to a really nice level to, to sound clear. Okay, so when you practice, be sure that you dedicate some time enough time for those to develop also don't forget about using a metronome when you practice and some kind of recording device for you to record your practice session so you can hear how you sound and assess and analyze what you're what you're doing so guys i think that's it on the chromatic scale i hope it helped i hope it made sense somehow um, feel free to drop me an email at martino at londonsaxophoneschool.com put a comment here below ask questions you can also book a free discovery call with me where i can learn about your background we can have a chat and we can make a plan for you to achieve your goals and just play better and improve your saxophone playing uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the little bell and i'll see you next time take care